On July 19th, which is three days ago now, there is a prominent Ukrainian neo-Nazi known, known as Erna Faryan, um, and she was a former MP in the in the in Ukraine's parliament, the Rada, with the fascist Svoboda party. Like so she was shot dead in Lviv, um, which is a, a city with a certain history, uh, shall we say? Um, and uh, she 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 was a longtime advocate of purging um, uh, Ukraine of all Russian speakers uh, through violence. And but even more um, like damningly, she was tied to the maiden false flag massacre. So this was like in February 2014, um, there was a mass shooting of Maidan protesters in what was then Freedom Square and is now known as Maidan Square. And this was a really key event in, in the Maidan coup because the protests had kind of run out of steam. Um, nothing was really happening. There'd been a fail, a failed um, attempt to a, a no confidence vote in Viktor uh, Yanukovych, um, and like then the sniper killings happened, and there was this avalanche of international condemnation. The government was blamed, and then the president flees the country, and then the country is taken over, uh, well, temporarily by unelected fascists. Now, um, the in October last year. There, a, a, it was a, a ruling by a Ukrainian court. It found three former Ukrainian police officers guilty in absentia of of shooting these uh, protesters. I think it was like over a hundred were killed or something. I mean, it's grotesque. Um, and there were many more injured, of course. And um, despite the fact that it, it convicted these people in absentia, um, the million word judgment contain numerous references to the fact that the shots were coming from Hotel Ukraina, which was occupied by Maidan activists and Svoboda. Um, and uh, it, it, it stated in one passage that it couldn't be ruled out that, that the shooters weren't police. Now, um, the there is a lot of footage of what was happening in um, uh, in, in Maidan Square at that time, which has been compiled, it was shot by the BBC and other Western um, media outlets that were there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, there were um, uh, uh, there, there are a number of clips of shooting very clearly emanating from Hotel Ukraine's eleventh floor. Um, and in one clip, uh, a BBC correspondent notes that one of the snipers on on that floor is wearing a green helmet, which is worn by Maidan protesters. So, I mean, what could be more suspicious than that? But um, when this BBC reporter went to investigate, he found he didn't he didn't meet anyone suspicious, but he found a handwritten note attached to the door of room one one o nine, warning people not to enter at the request of the SBU. Um, it was just handwritten; it didn't look very official. Now, anyway. Um, uh, this Ukra Ukrainian former lawmaker, uh, Ernia Far Farian, was staying in that room uh, at the time. <laughs> so, I, I mean, she was following Maidan um, all over um, the, the, uh, the, the, the crackdown in Donbass that was called the, the anti-terror op operation. And she was meeting with the fascist volunteer paramilitary groups that were going to fight it. Um, and she, she, she had already called for Russian speakers in Ukraine to be like d d expelled from the country um, and for Ukraine to be an ethnically pure state for Ukrainians. Um, she uh, she met yeah, she, when she was meeting with the with these paramilitary groups, she, she was like openly talking about how they were to serve as the spearhead of, of World War Three with Russia and that they, that, they, that they were on this godsend mission to destroy Moscow and, and Russians and all this, engaging in all of this very fiery rhetoric. Um, I might add that this didn't actually play well with the overwhelming majority of the Ukrainian population. It's a very slim proportion, <laughs> of, uh, 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 but they just happen to have a heavily outsized influence in politics and society in the military and also the intelligence services, so, um, which is no coincidence, of course. And so, like, she actually ended up getting in trouble in November last year, Farian, because she insulted um, Russian-speaking soldiers in Ukrainians mil in, in Ukraine's military, including members of, of Azov Regiment and the Third Assault Brigade. She called them uh, Muscovites, and she said she could not call them Ukrainians. She got expelled from her um, teaching position within L Lviv University, and the SBU initiated criminal proceedings against her. Um, it is. We can only speculate why this has happened now. Um, I mean, my one, my kind of again pet theory, which is 
is right unless it's wrong, in which case you know, you can't blame me. Um, it, the, it, basically, they're taking out the kind of people who would be opposed to a peaceful settlement with Russia. Yeah, because it was of course as as you've I mean well I mean you can take the floor here, but like the, 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 it was the neo-Nazis who prevented Zelensky from fulfilling his mandate of peace with Russia and implementing Minsk. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'd actually like to point out a, a few things regarding this story specifically, rather than yes. the uh, sure th that that angle. Um, but you know, the Svoboda Party uh, is Ukraine's is a neo-Nazi party in Ukraine. It was founded by a man by the name of Ola Tanyabok, uh, who there are plenty of photos of him, you know, mm. sick hiling. Uh, also plenty of photos of him meeting with Joe Biden. Joe Biden, uh, uh, again, I think I pointed this out on a previous episode, went to Ukraine some 16 times before the Maidan coup. Um, and among the people that he was frequently meeting with was Tanya Bok. Um, it's not surprising to me that the Svoboda party and this woman in particular were elected as lawmakers in Lviv. Lviv was mm. a city in, uh, that before the Holocaust had about a third of its population as Jewish. It was one of the major Jewish mm. cities in, in all of Europe. Um, this is, of course, no longer the case. There's virtually no Jewish community there anymore. And in fact, there are restaurants that are built on top of uh, destroyed synagogues, which, you know, for example, the the staff dresses up as Orthodox Jews, as caricatures of Orthodox Jews and uh, force it. There's no, there's no um, prices on the menu. They force you to haggle uh, as as an open mockery of the uh, of the ethnically cleansed Jews from that city. This is again mm -hmm. built on top of a historic um, synagogue. So I mean, Lv Lviv is 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 a major center of the Ukrainian neo Nazi problem. While neo Nazi parties have not had overwhelming electoral success in the whole of Ukraine, they have in places like Lviv. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.